Right, Shalom, giving all praises, honor and glory unto Yahweh, Bar Shem Yahweh Shai, Bar Hashem Rakakadash, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone at Rulwell. Shalom to Yaakim that are teaching this word around the globe with faith and truth and in sincerity. This is the Baba Kaleb from the GMS London Forecasters Camp coming back at you with another lesson to Lord willing, hopefully edify the Lord's elect. As always, I'd like to start by saying that we are the real Hebrew Israelites. The real Israelites, these so-called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, Native Americans, West Indians and West Africans predominantly. However, you are going to get Israelites that do look like the other nations because Israel has been scattered amongst all people throughout our various captivities. But if your seed line or your forefathers goes back to the man in the Bible that was named Israel, then you too are an Israelite no matter what you may look like. Because the book of Numbers chapter 1 and verse 18 states that your nationality is determined by the lineage of your forefathers, okay? So I'm going to do a lesson here on an article that I was reading, uh, was it yesterday maybe? It's from the Metro News. <clears throat> now I'm going to say this before I read the article. Whenever you're looking at things in the world, there's always a spiritual component to it. To it. You know, it's always, um, it's always good to think spiritually when you're assessing situations or you're reading situations, just, you know, in your everyday life, because there's always a spiritual component to everything. Now Esau will teach you that oh there's no such thing as um the spirit it's all fairy tales and you know there's no such thing as God God don't exist and he'll try and get you believing in um evolution and big bang theory and all this kind of shit because basically Esau's a base man Esau Esau the only spirits that Esau deals with are left hand side spirits which is you know spirits under Satan you know on the left hand side and the most high ultimately both sides are controlled by the most high but Esau gets down that left hand side energy. And he'll teach you that, you know, righteous, the righteous side don't exist. Oh, you know, God doesn't exist, all this crap. Now, I'm saying that to say this because <clears throat> spiritual power is very real. There's many forms of spiritual power. You know, you can look at Samson. He was a mighty man. He slew, what, a thousand men with the jawbone of an ass. King David was a mighty man. He had spiritual power in battles and stuff like that. He slew Goliath and all, all, all you know. King David slew, slew, slew many men. I think King David's got the second highest body count in the Bible after Yahweh himself, or Yahweh Shai as well. Well, I suppose it'd be third then, wouldn't he? Yahweh then Yahweh Shai. Because when Yahweh Shai comes back, it's going to be um, a great sacrifice in Bosra when, when Yahweh Shai returns. But anyway, the, the point of the matter is that is, the point of the matter that I'm saying is that spiritual power is real and it can be on either the left hand side or it can be on the right hand side. Yeah, because demons do inhabit people, spirits do inhabit people, and people can can get <clears throat> strength beyond what would be considered normal. You know, you hear about well, I've seen some incidents of such things. You know, where there was um, I remember one time I was watching a video where some there's some bugged out Edomite looking woman, and she was near a motorway. I might try and see if I can find a video actually. And there are these police officers trying to apprehend her. And she was just shrugging them off and throwing them around. And now this is a woman, bear in mind. And these are grown-ass men police officers. <clears throat> so how did she get that kind of power to be able to do that? Well, she was she was bugged out, clearly. I don't know what if she'd been doing drugs or what. But she was clearly bugged out at the time I watched that. But I don't want to get too sidetracked on that, that little story. The, the point I'm making is that spiritual power can happen on either the right-hand side or the left-hand side. Now I've got this article here of an instance where this man's got demons on him and he got spiritual power to do what he did because what he what he did, I mean, if you really think about it, it's a crazy thing to be able to do. It takes some kind of strength to be able to do this. Let's read it from Metro News. It says, man pulled woman's teeth out with bare hands in terrifying attack. Now, that's, that's not an easy thing to do to rip someone's teeth out or their mouth. Let's read the article. It says, Soheb Yonis, 27, was sent to jail for sustained assault on his former partner. This is published on Sunday, May 16th. It says a man has been jailed for four years for a vicious attack on his former partner in which he pulled out two of her teeth with his hands. That's some crazy shit, man. That's some crazy shit to, to, to pull someone's out, teeth out of your bare hands. Spiritual power on the left-hand side. It says... Soneb Yonis broke a restraining order 
when he went inside the woman's home and tried to resume their relationship last year. A struggle ensued and Eunice told the victim he would kill her if she called the police, then fled the scene, Bradford Crown Court heard. It says Eunice returned awake later and entered into her house but became angry when she refused to get into bed with him. The court also heard that he then launched a brutal assault and punched his ex several times in the face, dragged her into the living room by her hair and kicked her in the face. Now this is this is all judgment from the most high being brought through by this guy. Yeah, He then picked up a pair of scissors and stabbed her in the left side of her head. This guy was going, um, I suppose he's going on like some Wolverine type berserker rage madness. Yeah. It says he refused to relieve and lunged at her with a screwdriver, causing a cut above her eye. So the guy's throwing pretty much everything but the kitchen sink at this woman, man. Uh, prosecutor Nadine Bashir said, it says Bashir told the court Eunice from Halifax, West Yorkshire, pinned the woman down, put his hand into her mouth and pulled out two of her bottom teeth, causing immense pain. Now think about it. If you're going to pull someone's teeth out, I suppose the easiest one to do, if you're going to do it with your bare hands, the easiest one to do would probably be the two front teeth. You know, they can get knocked out in a fight. You know, you punch someone hard enough, they might lose, lose the tooth. But the bottom teeth, these things are packed so tightly together. How are you going to be plucking them out with your bare hands? This guy had immense power to be able to do that. Immense demons on him. I mean, really, really logically think about it. Even, like, let's look at your, your your back teeth. How could you pull them out with your bare hands? Or even one of your canines. These teeth are, are, are pretty, pretty solid in your gum, man. You know, when was the last time you see someone get into a fight and one of their bottom teeth gets knocked out? It's usually the top ones. Anyway. And he pulled it out of his bare hands. How are you going to get a grip on these teeth, man? If you really think about it, how you, what, what surface area have you got to be able to get a good grip to, to yank this person's teeth out it's madness so it says um but Esau ain't, ain't looking at it that way Esau's just saying like oh yeah well we just have another domestic attack he's not even looking at the spiritual component to this thing which is why I'm saying when you're when you're looking at things in life you've always got to remember that there's spirits behind it you know there's spirits behind it <clears throat> it says she's tried to escape through the bathroom window but he attacked her again, squeezing her throat, the court heard. When he found out that the police were looking for her, him, he punched the woman again and hit her over the head with a clock. Now this sounds like some flipping wild ass back in the day, you know, WWF wrestling match. You know where they're fighting in and all of a sudden the referee's not looking, the guy pulls that steel chair and smacks the guy over the head or, you know, someone runs up to the side of the ring and they give him a mace. Like I remember the... The classic fight between um, what was it, Sergeant Slaughter and um, the Ultimate Warrior, where the Macho Man ran in and he, he put a glass mace in the ring and Sergeant Slaughter smashed the Ultimate Warrior over the head of it and ended up winning the fight. What was that WrestleMania? No Royal Rumble, nineteen ninety, nineteen eighty nine, nineteen ninety, something like that. Anyway, but you know what I mean. This, this sounds like some crazy wild ass WWF wrestling match, where they they're just hitting the person with everything they've got. It says, um, hit her over the head with a clock. The defendant was arrested three days later and claimed to be confused about events. He said he'd stopped taking his psychosis medication and was using crack cocaine. Now, you know, things like uh, recreational drugs and alcohol are often doorways. Like they open up doorways to your spirit. For other spirits to enter into you. That's why these things are dangerous. That's why you can get bugged out by them. Because what you're essentially doing is. When, when you're doing these recreational drugs. You're opening doors for demons to enter into your vessel. Which is why you, you've got to be very vigilant. You know. So this guy was opened up to the left hand spirit side. By using crack cocaine. Guess what these spirits entered into him. And he acted out. The judgment that came down from the most high against this woman. Because um, Deuteronomy 32 and 39 states. Let me get this.
Deuteronomy 32 and 39, and this is the Most High Yahweh speaking. It says, See now that I, even I, am He, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So this woman got wounded. She didn't die. The judgment wasn't for her to die. Uh, but she got severely wounded. Now Satan doesn't have the power to kill someone unless Yahweh gives them the um the go ahead to. Let me just quickly get that in the book of Job, second chapter. Let me get that. Job two one. Let me read this account. Again, there was a day when the sons of the Most High came to present themselves before Yahweh, and Satan came also among them to present himself before Yahweh. And Yahweh said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered Yahweh and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And Yahweh said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? There is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that fareth the Most High and eschewth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. See, so Satan was like, you know, why don't you destroy Job? Why don't you destroy him to the Most High? And the Most High says, I'm not going to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered Yahweh and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth now thine hand, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And Yahweh said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So Satan went forth from the presence of Yahweh and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. So basically, Satan had the power to afflict Job, but he didn't have the power to take his life. So in this instant, um, instance that I'm reading about here, Satan had the power to afflict this woman, but Yahweh didn't give, her, give Satan the power to take this woman's life. You know, so she got bust up real bad, but she's still alive. So continue on and it says, the defendant was arrested three days later and claimed to be confused about events. He said he'd stopped taking his psychosis medication and was using crack cocaine. Recipe for disaster right now. So it goes on to say, Eunice admits char charges of unlawfully wounding and breaching a restraining order. And on Friday, he was sentenced to four years in prison. Judge Jonathan Rose said it was merely fortuitous that more serious injuries were not caused to the victim and described Eunice as a dangerous man. Well, any man, any man that's prepared to pull someone's teeth out with their bare hands is dangerous. No two ways about that. But I want to read an account of um, demons, demons giving people immense strength. Uh, let me get that. It's in the gospel. Let me find it. Yeah, Matthew 8 and 28. This is 2,000 years ago when Yahusha was walking the earth. <clears throat> and when he was come to the other side into a country of the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs Exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by the way. So two men with devils came out, and they had demons on them, and they were so fierce that people were scared to even try and go past them. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Yahawashai, son of the Most High? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And he was a good way off from them, and a herd, and, and he was a good way off from them, and a herd of many swine feeding. So, and a good way off from them, a herd of many swine was feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go into the herd of the swine. And he said, Go. And he said unto them, Go. And when they were came out, they went into the herd of swine, and behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep, steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. So basically, Yahweh said, Get out of the men. And the demons went out of the men, and they jumped on the swine. And the swine knew they had demons on them, so they went and killed themselves by drowning themselves in the water. 
And it says, And they that kept them fled and went their ways to the city and told everything of what had, of what had befallen to the possessed of the devils. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Yahushua, when, and when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of their coasts. So, so Yahushua's power was so immense, they were scared. And they were like, you know, they besought him that he would depart because he had that kind of power, man. Now, Mark 5 and 2 is another good one. Starting from verse 1. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gardenes. Gardenes. Yeah. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Who, who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him. No, not with chains. So this guy had demons on him. He was so powerful that nobody could keep him bound. If they put rope on his hands, he'd break it. If they put chains on his hand, he'd break the chains. This is what I'm talking about. Spiritual power on the left-hand side. Something that Esau doesn't want to acknowledge or deal with. But that's exactly what this man in this article had. To be able to rip out this woman's bottom teeth with his bare hands. He says, And when he was come out of the ship immediately, they met him two out of the tombs. So out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit is one. It's two before. This time it's one. Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chain, chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken. Now think about it. To pluck, the, you know the chains have got the links. He basically plucked the links of the chain and broke them and was able to free himself. And it says he plucked them. Like you might pluck an eyelash, that's something light, but you don't pluck um chains and fe iron chains and fetters apart that easily this guy had spiritual power on him so it says um on the left hand side didn't say that i'm saying it on the left hand side it goes on to say because he had often been bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces neither could any man tame him and always night and day he was in the mountains and the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones but when he saw Yahushai far, far off, he ran and worshipped him and cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Yahushai, thou son of the Most High? I judge thee by the Most High that thou torment me not, see, because Yahushai's power over these demons. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. So this guy didn't have just one demon dwelling in him. He had a legion of demons dwelling in him. Now let's look up this definition of legion in the blue letter. Okay, this is Strong's G3002. Legion. Let's play it. Strong's G3003. Legion. Legion. Legion in the Greek. Legion. Okay, so Latin origin. Outline of biblical usage. Legion, a body of soldiers whose numbers differed at different times. And in the times of Augustus, seems to have consisted about. 6,826 men, i.e. 6,100 foot soldiers and 726 horsemen. Did this man have 6,826 demons in him? It's possible. It is possible because, what did the spirit say? Let's go back to it. Yahushua asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, legion. For we are many. So he didn't say legion for we are two or legion we are three, legion we are four. He said 
legion for we are many so you can never underestimate how many demons a, a, a person might have dwelling in their house you know what i'm saying it's kind of like if you have a mouse infestation if you've got a mouse infestation you've got problems man because one you might see one little mouse running around you trap it throw it out you think oh problem's done next thing you know you see more mouse droppings in your, in your dwelling place or whatever meaning that there's more so you've got to root them all out find find out where their hiding place is their what do they call it their nest is you've got to destroy the nest so is it with demons don't just think that these people have just one de demon dwelling in them there are many deep rooted and, and festering what did it say when an unclean spirit goeth out, out of a man I'm going to get that one let me finish this one first let me finish this and he asked him saying what is thy name and he answered saying my name is legion for we are many and he besought him much that he would not send him away out of the country now there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding and the devils besought him saying send us into the swine that we may enter into them and forthwith Yahushua gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine and a herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea and there were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea now that gives you a, 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 a definition or, or understanding of how many demons were in this one man because I just read it was it 8, 8, 8, 1,826 was considered a legion at that time and it said approximately 2,000 swine ran down the mountain into the sea so there's nearly 2,000 demons in this one man Mind blowing when you when you try and wrap your head around that. Mind blowing, man. And and scary. So when you're dealing with people, man, especially people outside this truth, don't ever underestimate how many demons they've got on them. And often time time and oftentimes time reveals all things. You know, you might be you might have been friends with someone from your school days and then all of a sudden you start seeing them do some bugged out shit. And you're thinking, why the hell would that person do that? The answer is they got demons on them. When the unclean spirit goeth out of a man. Matthew 12 and 43. It says, when an unclean spirit goeth out, is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and finding none. Then he saith, I will return unto my house, meaning the body. The word body goes back to bodega, which means house, I believe. So the spirit says, I will return unto my house, i.e. body, from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. Then he goeth, then goeth he. And taketh with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last estate of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. So basically, if you if you if you get a demon off you, that demon's always going to be looking to come back. And when it does come back, it's going to take several demons stronger than itself, and they're going to take root in you hard. That's why people have such trouble breaking addictions. Like say they're addicted to smoking or they're addicted to drinking or they're addicted to um, recreational drugs or whatever. It's very hard for those people to break those strongholds because they've got so many demons that are rooted in them. Like you hear it all the time. Oh, I gave up smoking like two years ago. Then a stressful life event happens. They start smoking again and guess what? It's even harder to kick the habit the second time and the third time and the fourth time, you know? It's because of these demons, man. So, yeah, just making the point. Lord willing, it's edifying that, you know, if this man's going to pull out someone's teeth with his bare hands, that's some crazy kind of power and determination to do something like that. So I was, I'm just reading this and I'm saying, look, man, there are spirits on the left-hand side that are out here working this wickedness, man. So Lord willing, it's been edifying. Once again, giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Makakadash, that were honest to the elders and apostles, a great millstone that rule well. 
And shalom unto you, Akim, that are teaching this word around the globe of faith and truth. And until the next lesson, I do Lord willing, I say shalom, wa ba ba ba, wa kram yashawala. Shalom.